did I see this? Uh, Mariah Carey just visited President Biden at the White House. Mariah was thinking, I can't believe I'm meeting President Biden. This is awesome. While President Biden was thinking, I can't believe I'm meeting Mariah Spears or Taylor Carey or Brittany Rodrigo. Whoever this is, her hair smells like Pantene, and I can't complain. I ain't complaining. Hi, he's sniffing her. They got it uh, sniffing, sniffing women. She's a little old for him to be sniffing, though. He generally likes minors, although sometimes the wives of men that are standing there. Hey, wait a minute. But but da but 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 da but da but but. Ah, the bells. That's Michael on the bells. It's Christmas time. Or as the Democrats call it, looting season. It's really every season is looting season for the Democrats, isn't it? You saw the Democrats broke into the, well, they raided it while it was open. The Chanel store downtown Washington. Coco Chanel, you know. Coco, I'm Hard Rock, I'm Coco, I'm Joe. Coco Chanel store down downtown and a bunch of Democrats ran in there and blasted a fire extinguisher at people and stole a bunch of purses. How many purses, Michael? It's not really the number of purses that matters. They stole all of them that they could steal. $250,000 in Coco Chanel purses that uh, the Democrats stole from the Chanel store downtown Washington, D.C. An armed security guard chased him out and fired one shot. Fired one shot. Sadly, I uh, missed all of the perpetrators. Um, you know, but it is the Christmas season. Maybe <laughs> Maybe you wanted to let them get away or uh, something. So if you get, if you live in Washington, D.C., and uh, your friends, you know, are looters and everything, keep your eyes peeled for that Coco purse because that Coco Chanel purse, that could be a, that could be a real keeper. That could be a great Christmas present. Especially, it's probably, you're going to get it, and it's not going to be gift-wrapped by the store. And it's, that's going to be a clue. The Coco purse. You're a Democrat party. And look out at Loot Loot Lemon because you know how they love to loot 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 Lemon. And Loot Loot Lemon loves to be looted. They, uh, they, they announced pretty publicly that they enjoy being looted. So Loot Loot Lemon and Looty Vuitton and uh, now uh, Coco. I haven't come up with a loot name for, <laughs> for Coco Chanel. I'm sure there's one there somewhere. Uh, but this is our last big radio broadcast before Christmas, before Christmas. I naturally started doing a bit of research, and Christmas is a wonderful time of year. My best girl and I, it looks like this Christmas we're going to hang out and mind our own business and not travel and not. Often we go to Atlanta, sometimes Chicago. We like Chicago better in the summertime. My family, Chicago, my best girl's family uh, in uh, Atlanta and the greater Atlanta metroplex. And we, uh, we love going, we love going both places, but uh, we're kind of, you know, work, 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 work. And uh, I think we're going to sit tight. That's the old saying, isn't it? We're going to sit tight, I think, and probably not travel. Although we have been known to do last minute things right out of the blue. One year we decided kind of at the last minute, hey, look at the weather in, uh, uh, what's it called? Key West. Look at the weather in Key West. Looks real nice down there. And we were able to find a couple of last minute things, lickety split, lickety split. And we, uh, and we just got on a plane at the last minute and went to Key West, and the weather was real nice, and they have restaurants and they have bars. And, uh, and that snorkeling with the barracudas, we got uh, caught up in this coral reef while uh, snorkeling, surrounded by a school of barracudas, hundreds of them. There we were in the middle of the school of barracudas. So um, we bit a couple of them, and uh, the rest of them were scared away. It was good. Ah, I bit the barracudas. We didn't really bite the barracudas. I wouldn't recommend doing that. But I did a bit of uh, research, and, and, it, and it is, uh, obviously, Christmas time is great. It's wonderful. It would be better if the Democrats weren't on this crime wave and this, this push toward insurrection. You know, everything they do pretty much is insurrectionist, don't you think? It's uh, very insurrection-y. The, uh, they're not rioting right now, but that could change by tomorrow because you know how they love. They've got all these organized mobs on their Facebook groups and their Twitter feeds and the uh, where else do they put stuff? You know, those things, social media, because you got to keep in mind, social media isn't. Social media isn't. A great thing to do for Christmas would be to just turn everything off. 
Just turn it off. Chris, that's where you hear from your, you know, your high school friends. and your. I actually just heard from one of my old high school friends, Dude. Dude, Tom Dude. I don't want to use his whole name, but Tom Dude. Dude is short for his last name. Heard from uh, Dude the other day, and I hadn't heard from him in a couple of years. And he weighed in, and he's, you know, he's on Team America. He's on our side. And uh, it was very nice to hear from him. In fact, I'd, I need to call him back. We were texting and having fun and making fun of people. Uh, but uh, I'm going to have to call him old high school pal. And, and that happens a lot around this time of year, too, does, especially with the crazy world the way that it is and, and the country the way that it is. Good to touch base. It's another one of those things. Touch base with uh, sit tight, touch base with, uh, I should turn those into acronyms, abbreviations, because everything has to be an acronym or an abbreviation. But it'd be a good time to, uh, to talk to people you haven't talked to in a while. What do you think about that? I think that's a good idea. But don't loot anything. I was only kidding. Those are just Democrat jokes. I know that you won't. But there might be some Democrats listening, and they're going to hear, hey, uh, somebody just said I should go loot stuff, and then they'll go loot stuff. We were talking about it last night at, uh, on the Right Squad and at Newsmax last night because yesterday I went downtown to go to my Newsmax television show after leaving the uh, Cumulus radio show. And as I was driving down, I got word that that there had been a quadruple shooting by Nationals Park. Nationals Park. This is a couple of days after the police shooting on 9th Street in downtown. Um, Newsmax is right downtown and a couple blocks away. Police chasing a crazy Democrat with a gun in his hand through a crowd of people. D.C. police officer drew his uh, service weapon, fired on the suspect. One shot fired, hit him. Hit him in the, they just kept saying the lower body. What do you think that means? Shot him in the butt? You think that means shot him? Because <laughs> he's running away. He's got a gun in his hand. Lower body. Could have shot him in the leg like Joe Biden recommends. Joe Biden highly re- recommends that you shoot people in the legs. One leg, both legs, whatever you choose. But this report kept saying lower body. And I'm thinking that probably because that's vague enough and yet specific enough, it might lead you to believe that he got shot in the, in the butt. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder if Joe Biden would approve of that. I know that Senate staffer would. That's uh, that, uh, you know, that Ben Cardin guy. That's, uh, that's another thing. And, uh, oh, yeah, there's another, another story. There are a couple more stories, actually. About, there's this uh, staffer for uh, a member of the House of Representatives who's a Republican, and he had a staffer who's, uh, 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 I was going to say, was a gay man. I think he probably still is. And uh, he got caught having sex in the office There are cameras everywhere on Capitol Hill, except on January 6th. Then there were only a few cameras, and they weren't everywhere because, you know, politics, 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 politics. But uh, now there's another one in Dr. Jill Biden's office. Her press secretary was, where were they, at the NATO meeting? They were in uh, Europe, and uh, he's bringing in uh, strangers from the street to the secured floors where the White House is staying on and playing duck, duck, goose. But uh, that is, uh, we got to so say we got another one. We got another update for that. The Democrats, you know, can't you just be normal? I'm just being normal gay people. Just is there, they can't be normal anything. Normal is not their thing. Speaking of which, I don't know if you can get it in time, but, you know, remember normal coffee mugs and T-shirts be real good Christmas gifts from the Chris Plant Store. A lot of great things at the Chris Plant Store, as a matter of fact, for Chris. I haven't, you know, I don't promote myself as much as some other people. Some other people spend all their time on the radio and TV promoting themselves. I should do more of that, don't you think? That's what people tell me. I should do more. Well, some people uh, tell me that I should do more of that. But the, the Chris Plant Store has all kinds of stuff. That's on Al Gore's amazing internet. Peace be upon him. Uh, we are truly blessed to live in the same time as Albert Gore. He, <laughs> he is a senator's son. And uh, uh, yeah, but the Chris Plant Store, we got all kinds of, we, we got Cobra, Cobra, Cobra gear. We got, we got uh, Remember Normal. We got uh, I Survived the Wuhan Red Death. We got Mostly Peaceful. We've got all kinds of great stuff. And we might be re-entering the uh, Mostly Peaceful era. And uh, we got a lot of stuff to talk about today because We've got the White House on the run because of Bidenomics. That's what they call it. And it's a disaster. And the poll numbers show that it's a disaster for all of us. But they keep lying to us about it. Boy, do they keep lying to us. And Cobble Kirby lied to us yesterday. He really is our very own Baghdad Bob. Um, you think that he's got a stocking at home with Navy, Navy Joan uh, Roberts on there? 
Uh, Michael Pierce here today is wearing a Santa hat with a Washington Capitals logo on the front and some holly at the Holly Jolly Christmas on the on the Santa hat. Um, but I think everybody should have a Navy Joan Roberts stocking hanging from the mantle this year to remember the poor child that has been shunned by the Biden family because they're crackhead, stripper, knocker-upper, Russian hooker, Dayton, international business tycoon, Hunter Biden's son. He, uh, you know, but but somebody should put a, don't you think? The whole country should should remember Navy. And it's funny that mom, London Roberts, named the child Navy since the father, Hunter Biden, was kicked out of the Navy for repeated cocaine abuse. So I think it's kind of funny. It's a little poke in the eye to Hunter naming the child Navy. Pretty funny, a bad reminder. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, and a kid's middle name, most people don't know this, is Crack Pipe. Uh, Navy, <laughs> it's not really... Not really. It's Joan, and seems like a very nice uh, kid and a nice mom. And I hope they have a nice Christmas. And I hope that the Bidens don't. That's not true. I hope they have a nice Christmas and that the truth comes out at the dinner table. That'd be fun. The truth? I doubt it. So the uh, Washington Examiner White House scrambles to defend Bidenomics as polls flag. The polls are flagging. Uh, amazing stuff. And this, uh, another crooked Democrat in the, in the deep state machine. Oh, we have our Department of Deep State t-shirts and coffee mugs at the Chris Plant store too. Those are excellent, I think. It's the Department of State logo, but we just added the word deep. It's very subtle. You could have it on your desk at the State Department and most of your colleagues wouldn't even pick up on it because most of them are not very bright. But a radical leftist in the machine, Leslie Wolf who allegedly shielded Joe and Hunter Biden, says she's not authorized by the Department of Justice to answer questions. You will answer the questions. I will not answer the questions. And uh, she, uh, what, 79 times yesterday said, oh, the Justice Department says I can't talk about that. Amazing stuff. We've got, uh, we got that. And um, uh, Washington, D.C., crime and mayhem. A man apprehended. Is he an illegal alien? They don't say whether he's an illegal alien, but he sounds like he might be an illegal alien. Man apprehended after woman killed in Northwest, and the the article says stabbing, but in reality she was hacked to death with a hatchet. That's not stabbing, but never mind that. Uh, D.C. woman murdered in brutal hatchet attack. So we got that. And also because of Democrats, teen homicides, teen homicides skyrocketing in the United States of America. And if you compare today's teen ho- teen homicides to 1960, oh, the numbers are not very favorable. And it's all because the Democrats who love murder and hate children, but that's their uh, that's their thing. And the city council member in D.C., Phil Mendelson, he's talking about violent crime now. Isn't he the one who just recently said there is no crime problem? Now he's in a flop sweat gender panic about crime because it's completely out of control. Yeah, like a combat zone, two dead, two critically injured in shooting near Nationals Park in southwest D.C. That's the one I heard about driving down toward Newsmax yesterday. And, and uh, of course, NBC News reporting, most people think the U.S. crime rate is rising. They're wrong. They're using Joe Biden's FBI statistics. The, F- the FBI building should be turned into condos. We got the big downtown headquarters in Washington, D.C. on Pennsylvania Avenue, the J. Edgar Hoover building. A lot of duck, duck, goose going on in there, too. And uh, we should turn that into condos like the United Nations. We really should. New York City's slashing their school budgets, you know, for Christmas because the children, the children. It's about the children. President Trump's campaign hits back at ex-GOP lawmaker for claiming the former president smells bad. Adam Kinzinger. We'll uh, get to that one, too. The Supreme Court, even the Washington Post, thinks that the U.S. Supreme Court should overturn this left-wing, radical extremist, uh, segregationist, racist. Why is it racist? Ah, why not? The uh, you know the Colorado Supreme Court, where they got seven Democrats. Three of the Democrats voted against keeping President Trump off the ballot. Four of the Democrats voted in favor of keeping President Trump off the ballot. A whole bunch of Democrat states want to keep President Trump off the ballot which for some reason reminded me of the Democrat states breaking away from the Union and creating the Confederacy, which the Democrats did, and then they started the first Civil War. I call it the first Civil War now, because I think that's more appropriate. 
Nobody called World War I during World War I. We had to wait until World War II came along, and then we started calling it the First World War, and then the Second World War. I'm going to stay ahead of the game here and uh, call our Civil War the First Civil War. And I did a little research to look at all the Democrats that started it in South Carolina. All Democrats. And here we are again. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Pretty amazing stuff. And who's the worst two-term president of all time? Historians weigh in. Also, how about this NFL Super Bowl guy? Sick of average white guys commenting on football. Well, there has now been a rebuttal by a better football player uh, who had a few choice words for this racist who is a mainstream Democrat. Harvard is in big trouble because they suck. And, uh, and we are at 888-630-9625. Hey, it's Chris Plant, excited to tell you about our July 2024 Listener Sea Cruise. We'll be sailing around the British Isles, visiting Scotland and Ireland. Please join us. Visit ChrisPlantCruise.com. I'm already starting to wind down, you know, for uh, Christmas weekend. and My best girl and I, maybe we'll go out and have a nice dinner tonight. Have a lovely time with one another. You know what we'll do? We'll be normal. Of course, we live in Washington, D.C., so it might be hard to find uh, anything normal. Actually, our, our friend uh, Randy and uh, uh, the wonderful uh, Toby may be having some people over later on today. Uh, cocktails, you know, co- maybe light snacks, light snacks. But that said, a lot of stuff coming. Let, let's go. Let's take a uh, let's take a phone call, Michael, uh, and then we'll start getting into the news of the day. And uh, yesterday I was a little riled up. I was a little riled up. I'm, I'm less riled up today, don't you think? Sure. Sure I am. You can tell. All right, let's, uh, let's, take, uh, let's take Keith calling from the great state of Oklahoma, the Red Man. Keith, you're on the Chris Hi. Plant hey. Show. Hey, good morning, Chris. Hey, I used to be Keith on hold from North Carolina, but we moved. Congratulations. But, uh, thank you. We, uh, in reference to your... Uh, uh, first Civil War comment. I have a uh, brother that lives in Virginia, and uh, he's been telling me for years that he's just preparing for Third Manassas. The Third Battle of Manassas. The first two <laughs> battles of Manassas, uh, Bull Run, uh, the American yes, Civil sir. War, or the First Civil War, as we now as we now refer to it. You think we should get ready for number right. three, Keith? I uh, wouldn't be. It, it would probably be a wise idea. I moved to Oklahoma, so I'm uh, I'm I'm getting away from the epicenter. Probably in pretty good shape there. I've got. I'm going to share some historical facts coming right up. Since the Democrat Party is at it again, rascals that they are. Did a little look around, and I was actually talking to my friend Seton about uh, related matters a week ago or so. I went and looked at uh, history.house.gov. It's a U.S. government House of Representatives uh, website on the House of Representatives and their history, as you might imagine. Historical highlights. The secession of South Carolina. They seceded from the Union. And that was a first big step toward the first Civil War, the secession of South Carolina. December 24th, Christmas Eve. See, the Democrats were godless commies back then, too, apparently. December 24th, 1860. 1860. Joe Biden remembers it well. On this date, that is Christmas Eve, 1860, the House of Representatives received a letter announcing South Carolina's secession from the Union. South Carolina representatives John McQueen, Millage Bonham, William Boyce, and John Ashmore authored the letter which declared that the people of the state of South Carolina in their sovereign capacity have resumed the powers heretofore delegated by them to the federal government of the United States and have thereby dissolved our connection with the House of Representatives. They're all Democrats. I looked them up one at a time. Democrat, 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 because... You know, they're all Democrats. That's the, that's the thing about them. They wrote the letter. 
they uh, announced that that they were leaving the union because, you know, it was time for a civil war, right? Kind of an amazing thing. Representative James Blaine of Maine, he's a Republican, would later recall that the leave-taking of the Southern members in the Maine was not undignified. There was no defiance, no indulgence of bravado, he wrote, while a few Southern representatives marked their retirement by speeches, bitterly reproaching the federal government and bitterly accusing the Republican Party the large majority confined themselves to retiring in a formal fashion from the House of Representatives, of course, because they were, their states were seceding. In addition to the Southern, uh, it, it's uh, uh, interesting, South Carolina, 10 more Southern states seceded from the Union during the winter of 1860. South Carolina started it all. And the spring of 1861, under the leadership of former U.S. Senator Jefferson Davis, who was a Democrat as a senator, and then, of course, became the president of the Confederacy as a Democrat because, you know, the Southern, the Confederate States of America, that was the Democrats, and Abraham Lincoln, uh, the Northern United States of America, the Republicans, and then, of course, a Democrat shot Abraham Lincoln in the head and murdered him, and he was an actor. So uh, former, at that time, U.S. Senator Jefferson Davis, a Democrat, the Confederate States of America formed in February of 1861. I'm just, you know, a little history refresher never hurts. And since they seceded on Christmas Eve of 1860, so what is that, um, 163 years ago, and it's strange that the Democrats are still bitter about it, isn't it? And they they just tore down, they're tearing down this week the Reconciliation Monument in Arlington National Cemetery, which was dedicated uh, the early in, in the 20th century as a symbol of the reconciliation between North and South. And Republicans today would like to keep our history in place and keep the memorial in place. And interestingly, the Democrats are tearing down the Reconciliation Memorial that may at some later date be seen as a meaningful, symbolic gesture by the Democrat Party. But in any event, uh, under the leadership of former U.S. Senator Jefferson Davis, the Confederate States of America was formed February 1861, and the first shots in the Civil War were fired on federal forces at Fort Sumter in April of 1861. Now, why is all of that uh, pertinent today? Well, you're just looking at the Democrat Party. And in South Carolina, what was going on, these these uh, multiple Democrat members of the House of Representatives that wrote the letter announcing the secession of the state, a Republican from Maine uh, opining on the dignity with which they uh, perpetrated this act, which was the first big step toward the the country being divided into North and South and the Civil War coming and the uh, Democrats firing on Fort Sumter. The governor of South Carolina at the time was a man named Francis Wilkinson Pickens. Francis Wilkinson Pickens. And Francis Wilkinson Pickens was a Democrat also, the governor there. And um, he was a lawyer and a politician. That's, that's not good. But that said, the, uh, the senators, they had two senators, as you might imagine, as well. And the two senators, Robert Woodward Barnwell, he was a Democrat also and a slave owner, as you might expect. And I thought a couple of interesting things that I, that I found when I was going through. He's a, he's a Democrat, and he went to Harvard. And he went to Harvard, another Harvard guy. And, and I thought, oh, well, that's kind of interesting. He went, to, he went to Harvard, and he's a Democrat and a slave owner, and then he was one of the guys driving the train the beginning of the the Civil War. Amazing stuff. One of them I found also went to Princeton. So the Ivy League has been poisoned for a long time, and they've been around for a long time, and they've been poisoned for a long time, poison and poisonous, remarkable stuff. You got your Princeton grads, you got your Harvard grads, you know, your Democrats. 
Why is that relevant today? Well, you know, watching the Democrats with everything they're doing, trying to take President Trump off of the ballot in multiple states, uh, reading a list of the Democrat-run states that are trying to take President Trump off of the ballot reminded me of 1860 here in the United States of America. And uh, the states, we know that Colorado and their Supreme Court, which has seven Democrat-appointed members to the Colorado State Supreme Court, four of the Democrat appointees uh, voted to do away with President Trump, take him off of the Republican primary ballot in the state of Colorado. Three of those went to Ivy League institutions. Three of those left-wing radical justices went to Ivy League institutions. Just a coincidence, I'm quite sure. One of them is a left-wing activist, LGBTQ, and you know, claims to be a minority of some kind and, and likes to double up on all that. But Colorado got the ball rolling. South Carolina got the ball rolling last time around. And it's not just, of course, uh, Colorado that is hell-bent on keeping President Trump off of the, off of the ballot. Colorado uh, did it through the Supreme Court. But in Arizona, the Democrats are trying to keep President Trump off of the ballot. And that is uh, what they call a crucial swing state. In California, the lieutenant governor there, Eleni Kunalakis, a Greek woman, a disgrace to the Greek people, she penned a letter as well where she got uh, a number of things wrong factually and historically, constitutionally. She's not very smart. She's a Democrat. She's the lieutenant governor. She's got money coming in from George Soros right now, literally, because she's planning on running for pre- uh, for governor, rather, in uh, in California because uh, Mr. Hairpiece is term limited and he's out uh, in two more years. So Eleni Kunalakis is planning on becoming the governor and George Soros is planning on helping. She wants California to take uh, President Trump off of the primary ballots as well because they're insurrectionists. Right? They want to pack the Senate. They want to pack the Supreme Court. They want to take their political opponents off of the ballot. They want to abuse their political power, whether it be in the state Supreme Court, the U.S. Supreme Court, the U.S. Senate. Wherever you find Democrats, you find people abusing power. And uh, Kunalakis, she also uh, put, because she's an idiot and I talked about her, she, she said that President Trump, you know, in order to be president, you've got to be a uh, natural-born citizen, you know, like Trump isn't. And you have to be 40 years of age. Actually, you have to be 35 years of age. But the lieutenant governor of California is uh, not very bright. That's uh, where uh, Kamala Harris came from. She was the attorney general. And then that's just amazing. Uh, these people are of such limited intellectual capacity. In Maine, the uh, Democrats are trying to have President Trump taking off taken off the ballot. Does this sound at all like the formation of the Confederacy? It's uh, geographically different, visually different when you look at the map. But Michigan, the Democrats, another key battleground state, Michigan, the Democrats are trying to have Trump taken off the ballot. Minnesota, the Democrats are trying to have Trump taken off the ballot. And Rhode Island, the Democrats are trying to have Trump taken off of the ballot because they're corrupt people. And they're going to fire on Fort Sumter one of these days or whatever the equivalent of that may be. Other states where Trump faces ballot challenges, lawsuits have been filed, according to Newsweek magazine, in several other states in addition to the states I just cited. Alaska, Nevada, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, Democrats, Oregon, New York, South Carolina. See, they, so they could fire on Fort Sumter. Texas, West Virginia, Wisconsin, Wyoming, Vermont, and Virginia. See, that's the, uh, that's the thing. They're one of their radical left-wing uh, House members, the Castro brothers. Raul and Fidel? No, the other ones here in the United States. Castro has also uh, withdrawn challenges in California, Connecticut, Delaware, Idaho, Kansas, Maine, Massachusetts, Montana, North Carolina, Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, and Utah. Um, they, uh, they're trying to usurp our constitution. They're trying to short circuit our system of government to, to humiliate, quite honestly, our, our system of government. They, um, man, oh man, oh man, 
They are not on our side, are they? That's your Democrat Party. And you got to look out on Christmas Eve because last time around, Christmas Eve was key. Very key. Yes, sir. In Arizona, President Trump has faced challenge in his this crucial swing state of Arizona, uh, filed by a Republican presidential candidate, John Castro. But uh, U.S. District Judge Douglas Rays ruled earlier this month that uh, the challenge had no standing because Castro is not genuinely competing with Trump for votes in the GOP primary. Uh, so he's, uh, I'm going to say, a former Republican. That's not uh, what Republicans do. It's, it's quite an extraordinary time to be an American, and we should be aware of our history and of world history so that when we discuss this with our dim-witted relatives at the Christmas dinner table or anyplace else, our dim-witted colleagues at work, we should be armed with the facts. Facts are funny little things, aren't they? You're a Democrat party. I think uh, things are getting interesting. And Republicans in a number of states, starting with the lieutenant governor in Texas, Dan Patrick, is talking about having Joe Biden removed from the ballot there. And the uh, explanation that he gave, he said, well, the crimes that he's committed with the open borders, right, flooding our country. I've been watching. I've got a bunch of news on the border today. And Joe Biden should be impeached for his open border policies. And Alejandro Mayorkas, the DHS secretary, should be impeached first um, or simultaneously because they are doing everything they can to destroy our country, as Barack Obama promised, the fundamental transformation of America and uh, Obama was too much of a coward, but now he is the hand inside of the sock puppet that is Joe Biden. And uh, now the country is being overrun. It's the Cloward and Piven strategy being animated. Two radical extremist left-wing Democrat college professors, Francis Fox Piven and, and her pal, what's his name, Cloward, and they came up with a plan decades ago to overload the systems in the United States of America to drown us in debt to overwhelm us with uh, government obligations to the point where our government would necessarily collapse. And uh, what we're seeing now uh, looks very much like the Cloward and Piven strategy, doesn't it? It certainly does. And it's the Democrat Party today. Francis Fox Piven was very much involved. College professor is still out there last time I looked. She uh, was part of the Occupy Wall Street movement and creating armies of zombies that would then become genocidal anti-Semites, attacking Jewish-owned businesses in Philadelphia because every knocked is crystal knocked. Francis Fox Piven during the Occupy Wall Street movement, uh, minting new zombies. No brains. No imagination. Columbia University School of Social Work, uh, Francis Fox uh, Piven, just extraordinary sociologists, political activists, and and they came up with a plan, professors at Columbia University, where Barack Obama went to school, didn't he? Uh, After being mentored by his Communist Party leader. Just extraordinary uh, stuff. And then Barack Obama, of course, That was Frank Marshall Davis, his Communist Party activist mentor. And then, of course, Barack Obama made the Communist Party voter John Brennan the director of the CIA, and then John Brennan led intelligence officers, 51 in total, signing that that information operation that they ran against the American people on the lead-up to the 2020 election, which may very well have thrown the election. It certainly corrupted our election. But Cloward and Piven... They had a plan to collapse the United States of America by overwhelming all of our systems, overwhelming us economically. What's our national debt now? What's our immigration situation now? What's our sovereignty situation now? How divided are we? And you really think it's just regular Americans that vote Republican and join the military and serve as police officers and save their money and and raise boys to be boys and girls to be girls You think those people are the problem in America today? Yeah, January 6th. 
You guys normalized January 6th 500 times in scores of cities across America. Everyone an insurrection. Yeah, but uh, Cloward and Piven planning on collapsing society in America. And uh, they're not done. And their descendants are running the Democrat Party. Somebody, we better put Iron Dome. We got to bring Iron Dome into South Carolina. Fort Sumter may be in danger. You're listening to The Chris Plant Show. I hope everybody plans on having a nice, quiet, not very political Christmas timer. You know, with uh, nice people. My whole family is completely mellow on politics, which is great. Both sides, my best girl's family, my family. Everybody's great on politics, really, uh, truly. Um, And that's a nice thing. I I hear that's not the case in every family. Um, So let's go. Let's take a phone call. Let's go to Robert calling from Waldorf, Maryland. Robert, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Uh, good morning, Chris. I'm calling to wish you a Merry Christmas. You and your staff, y'all, done a great job this year again, keeping me informed, keeping all of us informed. And, you know, since since we lost Rush, you've stepped up and you've been the guy. I mean, the rest of them can't touch you, buddy, but thank you for keeping us all informed. You're very kind. Thank you very much. That's high praise. Yes, it is. I um like to... um talk to you for a minute about this impeachment. I hear you every day, and I hear Mark Levin saying we need to impeach this guy. And and, and knowing how the Republicans like to, I'll say, shoot themselves in the foot, um, I, I just want your opinion on this. I, I think impeaching Biden, just, you know, if they, if they have the impeachment inquiry, then you have the impeachment vote in the House, and you send it to the Senate. I believe you might possibly be doing the Democrats a favor. You got a guy here at what thirty six percent approval, right? I mean, it's like you got the enemy where you want him. Keep yeah. him where he's at, and, and, and in honor of Rush, let's well, go with Operation. Well, let me Operation Chaos. I'm gonna. I ran out of time. I'm gonna update uh, on you. <laughs> 